Hello everyone uh, and welcome to this webinar. Um, and once again, congratulations on being admitted to KTH. Uh, if you've seen any of the previous webinars, you might recognize me. If not, my name is Johanna Valander. I'm an administrator at the Information and Service Group. With me today, I have... Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Sara and I'm on my second year here at KTH. I'm from Iceland and I'm studying engineering physics and I am the international student ambassador for my program. Thank you. So let's get started. Uh, we'll have a short presentation uh, then we'll answer some of the questions you've sent in and then we'll open up a chat where you can chat with uh, my colleagues, uh, student ambassadors and so on. So firstly, I just want to go through uh, some COVID-19 information. Uh, so as for all the universities worldwide, COVID-19 has impacted our operations at KDH. Our aim has always been to keep students set, safe uh, while still providing world leading education. Last year, we went over to blended learning, so both digital and on campus. Uh, we welcomed around 1500 international students during the autumn semester of 2020. And priority is given uh, to these new students um, for on campus learning. Uh, in Sweden in general, there have been no hard lockdowns. Uh, it depends a lot on personal responsibility. So staying home if you feel ill and so on. Um, so in the autumn, we do hope uh, to be able to return to campus. Uh, we do uh, continue with developing digital teaching and we prepare for all scenarios. Um, and we will keep you updated through email. So we're going to talk a bit about accommodation. Um, as non-tuition fee paying students, you're not guaranteed housing through uh, KTH. Um, so we do have a few tips um, on what to think about when looking for accommodation by yourself. So firstly, be open for short term uh, in the beginning. It is a lot easier looking for long-term accommodation once you come to Sweden. Make sure to also look outside the city center. Uh, public transportation in uh, Stockholm is very good, so it's easy to get into the city center. Make sure to post your own ad so landlords can contact you directly. And finally, don't uh, pay any deposit or rent in advance. So we're going to talk a bit about, oops, sorry, um, we're going to talk a bit about uh, the external housing queues. Uh, firstly, there is SSSB. Um, they have several types of accommodation, and the longer that you're a member, the higher chance of getting an accommodation. Uh, there's an annual cost of being a member at SSSB and you need to be a member of the student union THS in order to become a member at SSSB. And I thought, Sarah, you could explain how the queue works. Yeah, so um, you can create an account at uh, SSSB.se and you can collect up to 90 days before um, you sign up for a student union. So um, then you, uh, once you've signed up for student union, you can resume uh, collect, collecting the days. And uh, depending on how many days you have in the queue, you, uh, you're more likely to get um, a, a housing from SSB. They have a number of different available apartment options like studios, studios or shared accommodation, dormitory or quarter rooms. And usually for the corridor rooms, you don't need so many days. But for maybe the, the bigger apartments, uh, it's quite hard to, to get those right away. And you can uh, see the available apartments on their site. And you can also see 
the uh, st student that have applied, which one has the maximum number of uh, days. So you can kind of get an idea of what kind of option is, uh, will work for you. Yes, thank you. Um, and secondly, there's Academisk Kvart, which is managed by Stockholm Federation of Student Union, SSCO. So there people can post if they have a room or an apartment available. Um, it's regularly controlled to make sure that there are no scams and that the rents are okay. Um, and there you can also make your own posts so landlords can contact you directly. And once again, remember to don't pay anything in advance and read through the information carefully. Uh, and finally, I just want to say that um, if KDH accommodation um, open up applications for EU students, this will be uh, at the end of June. And unfortunately, we can't predict if there will be accommodations available through KTH accommodation. Uh, we won't know that until the application is closed for the tuition fee paying students. Um, and I thought, Sara, you could talk about a monthly budget. Yeah, so um, the rent can vary quite a bit. So um, a cheap option would be a corridor room for maybe around 3000 um, Swedish. And then you can have uh, some more expensive options like studios that are up to maybe 7000. And so um, as well as the food budget can also depend a lot. If you go to little and, and cook um, from home, you can get away probably with less than 3000. But if you like eating out a lot and going to bars and such, then you will probably spend, yeah, maybe a little bit more than 3000. Then uh, transportation is really nice, but it costs uh, like tw 25 per trip, but you can also get monthly cars. But so you can expect to spend uh, something on uh, transportation as well. I, for me, I would spend around 11,000 Swedish per month. You can probably get away with less. And as uh, they have summarized on this slide, the typical spending is between 8,000 and 10,000 per month. Thank you. Um, and I also want to add something that you might have to consider in your monthly budget, and that's insurance. So all students, students at KDH are covered with a personal injury insurance uh, but it's very limited as it only covers uh, injuries during school uh, on school property um, and also direct travel to and from school. Uh, master students from an EU or EEA country uh, don't have additional insurance through KDH. Uh, so make sure to um, purchase an insurance before coming to Sweden and also make sure to bring your uh, European health insurance card. Uh, with it, you're entitled to the same patient fees as Swedish citizens. Um, some more important practical matters. Uh, first thing is uh, the Swedish personal identity number. If you're staying longer than 12 months, you are entitled to, uh, to have a Swedish personal identity number. Uh, the Swedish personal identity number is given by the Swedish tax agency. And we recommend that once you've arrived in Sweden and registered at KDH to go to their office and apply for it. Um, this number makes living in Sweden a lot easier everything from borrowing books, becoming a member at different gyms, stores, um, and also opening a bank account, which is our second thing we'll talk about. Um, we do advise that you open a bank account. It's convenient for paying bills, and you should do it after you've received your personal identity number. And if you can't open a bank account, uh, make sure to bring an international debit or credit card 
and don't bring any personal checks or large amount of cash because it's usually not accepted in Sweden. Uh, so healthcare in Sweden, um, with the Swedish personal identity number, you're entitled to the same patient fees as a Swedish citizen um, because we have subsidized healthcare in Sweden. However, dental care is not fully uh, subsidized so it can be relatively expensive in Sweden. So make sure that you have dental insurance. Finally, uh, if you want to work during studies, uh, you don't need an additional work permit. Um, so you're allowed to work during your studies. Um, please note, however, that it might be hard to find something if you don't speak Swedish, but it is possible to find. So yeah, uh, now we've gone through some of the practical matters. Uh, I thought, Sara, you could talk about your student life and life in Stockholm. Yeah, um, so I've gathered some pictures from my stay here in Stockholm. This year I'm living in uh, KD8 student accommodation and here on the right is a picture of my um, studio apartment. Um, and below is the view from, from the apartment. Um, here I gather some pictures of uh, Swedish food and pastries. So fika is a really popular thing here in Sweden, where you meet up with friends and get a coffee and a kanelbulla, which is uh, on the center figure here. So when COVID started last year, I uh, baked my first batch of kanelbullas. Uh, they're not perfect, but they tasted really nice um, and then here to the right is Lussekatter which is really popular popular um, saffron spice pastry and and then there's some more um, typical Swedish food here on the left. Um, next slide. So the seasons vary quite a bit here in Stockholm. The win winter is really nice and very beautiful. The city um, is filled with decorations and lights um, and you can do many winter sports without having to travel far away from the city. So this year we got a lot of snow in Stockholm which, which was really nice and I was able to try out natural ice skating and cross-country skiing for the first time. Um, next slide. Yeah, but I would say nothing beats uh, the sweetest summer and spring. It's really nice and the city really comes to life and there's so many things you can do. You can uh, have a barbecue in the forest and in the parks and you can go camping or rent a cabin um, or go for day trips to the uh, many islands that Stockholm ha ha has to offer. You can go kayaking even in the city, around the islands in the city, and swimming, hiking. Um, so a lot of things and all very close to the city. Yeah, I just want to, that's the uh, city hall. We can see it right there in the picture, right? Yeah, in the kayaking photo, you can see the, the city hall there. Yeah, exactly. So um, when you start your studies in August, uh, there's one month long international st uh, student reception where you can sign up for multiple events um, and you will be signed a buddy. And with your buddy group, you will do a bunch of things together. So my first year I was part of a buddy group and I really enjoyed it. So on my second year, I uh, became a buddy myself and organized events for my group of students and here, on the center figure, you can see my buddy group from last fall in a nice park in the city. Um, yeah, I could talk a lot more about student life, but now I'll let Johanna tell us more about the arrival days. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so now you have a lot to look forward to. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit about the arrival days. So in August, the group that I work with, Information and Service, arranged two days that we refer to as arrival days. Uh, this year, it's the 2nd and 22nd of August. So if you arrive to Sweden and KTH on any of these days, there will be 
a free bus that will take you from Arlanda Airport to KTH on 3, which is on the main campus. Uh, and if any of you arrive uh, with the train, there will be student ambassadors at Stockholm Central Station to welcome you and guide you. And once you've arrived to KTH on 3, you will receive all the help needed um, to smoothly begin your time at KTH and Sweden. So I thought I'd just mention some of the things that we will assist you with um, when you're, if you arrive during the arrival days. So as I mentioned, there will be welcome services at Arlanda Airport as well as Stockholm Central Station. Um, and from Arlanda, you can take a free uh, shuttle bus uh, to the main campus. Uh, you can check in your luggage uh, at the luggage service at KTH on 3. Uh, you will get help to activate your KDH account at KDH on 3. You can get to know the student union, THS, and you can also ask questions and mingle with students and staff. So, uh, so before you arrive in Stockholm in August, there are some upcoming webinars that you should join. Um, and you can also join um, groups for newly admitted students, such as on Facebook. Um, but there are other ways to uh, contact us. And I thought, Sara, you could talk a bit about the student ambassadors. Yeah, so each program has a student ambassador and you can send the ambassadors uh, questions if you like. Um, and you can also read their interviews on the KDH website. So reading some of those interviews, I think, will give you more insight into life at KDH. Um, and you can hear from students with all kinds of uh, different backgrounds and uh, students um, studying different progr programs at KDH. Uh, so here on the slide, you can see different ways of contacting KDAs. Thank you. Um, so we'll now go through uh, some of the questions that you've been able to send in beforehand. Um, so I'll start with, uh, how can I check on which campus my courses are going to be held? Um, so you can find information uh, about where the program is mainly held uh, on the program's information page on the KTH website. So what you can do is you can simply search campus uh, and you'll find the information. Um, however, please note that some courses within the program might be held on different campuses. Uh, the next question. Uh, I'm an EU citizen and would like to try for KTH accommodation. Should I apply during May? So no, if you're, if you're ex uh, exempted from paying tuition fee, you should not apply in May. Um, as mentioned during the presentation, uh, if there are accommodations left, uh, this will be announced in June. Uh, so we do recommend you start looking for private accommodation now. Uh, a question for you, Sara. Um, is there something planned regarding the master program between the 2nd of August and the 22nd of August? Yeah, so as I briefly mentioned earlier, there is the international uh, student reception and that is uh, really a whole month, whole of August, filled with uh, activities and different events that you can sign up for. And uh, you can uh, get, uh, so there will be plenty of social activities and you can, can get more information on that if you watch the Student Union web webinar on the 17th of June, uh, where you can find more yeah, information. Perfect. Um... Which place is best to live as a student in Stockholm? So we can't really recommend um, an area to look for accommodation. Uh, however, as I mentioned in the presentation, um, public transport is good in Stockholm. So make sure to also look outside the city center. Um, another tip would also be to 
look at a map over public transport in Stockholm to see where the buses, trains, or the metro goes. Um, and lastly, sir, a long question for you. Um, when registering to SSSVQ, they ask me for my address, postal code, and city, but I haven't moved to Stockholm yet. Do I need to live in Sweden to get uh, the first 90 Q days, or can I register even though I'm still in my home country? Yeah, so you can still register even though you haven't um, made it to Stockholm yet. That's what I did uh, before I came here, so that should work just fine. Perfect. Um, so yeah, the chat is now open. And just to show you uh, where you can find the chat icon, it's the little uh, pink icon in the bottom right. And you can find this on all pages on the new at KPH website. So yeah, I want to thank everyone for listening and thank you to Sara for joining me and helping me today. Uh, the chat is now open, so if you won't have any questions left, please head over there. Um, and I do hope that you will all join us for the upcoming webinars and my colleagues and I can't wait to meet you all in August. So make sure to join the chat now um, if you have any questions. And there you can chat with the student ambassadors, some of my colleagues and myself. And just uh, if you've missed any of our previous webinars, uh, they're all recorded and you can find them on new at KTH or uh, KTH YouTube channel. So thank you, Sara, for joining me. Yeah, thank you, Johanna, for having me. Bye.